Well, hey guys. Um, hello, third period. Uh, if you haven't been here or like yesterday, if I'm going to remind you, what we've been working on is our practice test for um, getting ready for the test. Now, you guys are just going to be doing the practice test and getting a good practice test to be able to use on your real test coming up next. Probably Wednesday is when I'll give the test. We'll review on Tuesday when you get back and we'll um, take the test on Tuesday. I mean, excuse me, Wednesday. All right. So, but we want you to have a really, really good practice test so you'll have good notes for the test next Wednesday because that's going to be a big part of your grade. All right, so let's see what we did yesterday. So let's review a little bit, okay? So yesterday what we did is we you got your practice test. And on the practice test we did the first page was translations. So I just want to quickly go kind of review what we did. So if you could get your packet out, I'm going to get rid of my little picture here. I don't think you need to look at me the whole time. And so what did we do yesterday? So remember, we had the original, which is this black figure, and we translated the original two to the right and four up. Okay, so each one of these points, if you see, got translated two to the right and four, and four up. So A goes to A prime. B goes to B prime and C goes to C prime. And what we did is we noticed that all we did is just slide this triangle four to the right and four up to get that triangle. And that's what we did yesterday. This is called a translation. Translations are, in my opinion, the easiest one because you're really just moving them. And this one right here, we slid it three to the left, the, took the black one, slid it three to the left and one down. So we went three to the left and one down three this way, and then one this way, and got the pre-image onto the image, okay? And that's what we did yesterday. So hopefully you're looking at that. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, on Tuesday, if you have any questions about that, please feel free to ask. And then remember this question said, identify the translation that moves the point to the origin. Well, remember, you got to know what the origin, and we kind of giggle, and we say the origin is the poo, right? The point of origin. So our point of origin is this big green dot right here in the middle right here. And so if we're going to take this point P, and we're going to move it to the origin, so we had to move it three to the right, one, two, three, and two down, one, two. That gets us from P to P prime, or in this case, P to poo, he, 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 that's funny, right? Okay, now, the next thing we're gonna do on number four, what we did yesterday, is we describe the translation from the original figure to the image. Now, yesterday we had to decide, well, which one is the pre-image and which one is the image, or which one is the original and which one is the image? Well, the original is the one without the primes. So the original one is the yellow one, right? Because it doesn't have primes. So we have to figure out, okay, what did we do to get from the yellow one to the blue one? And what we decided is we just chose one point, and I, one of our students chose G, and we decided we had to go six to the right and six down to get from G to G prime. And then, all the other ones will follow that same rule, six to the right and six down. So this will get us from G to G prime. And that's what we did yesterday on number four. Now, on number five, we had kind of a double problem. The first thing is Mr. Rodin said, okay, well, put, place the original point where you have lots of room to work. And you know you're going to have to go five to the right, and you know you're going to have to go eight down. So give yourself a lot of space to be able to move right and down. And that lot of space I just put over here for P. And then I just followed the rules. It said, okay, move P five to the right. One, two, three, four, five. And then move two up. One, two. Now, that's going to be our P prime because that's our pre-image is P. Our new image is P prime. But then it says take that and move it three to the left, one, two, three, and go eight down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you come up with P, we'll call that P double prime because we moved it again. Now, what is the final question asking? I highlighted it in blue. Write the translation from the original to the ending. Well, the original is P, and the ending was P prime 
double prime. So what gets you from P to P double prime? Well, two to the right, one, two, and six down. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's our answer for number five. Now, I know you guys did this already, but it's always good to refresh our brains and make sure we really understand this because we want to get a good grade on our test, okay? All right, so that was page one. Now you can flip the page, and now let's look at page two. Now, page two is a reflection page. That's the second transformation we're going to talk about is reflections. So what we did is, first of all, we highlighted our x-axis because that's going to be our flip line. And then we just measure the pre-image to the flip line. Well, R is 1, 2 away from the flip line. So R prime is going to be 2 down from the flip line. Q is 2 up from the flip line. So Q prime is going to be 2 down from the flip line. P is 4 up from the flip line. So P prime is going to be 4 down down from the flip line and then I just graph it and notice all I'm simply doing is taking this and flipping it over onto the red one does that make sense and some of us I noticed struggled with this so make sure you're asking Mrs. V or Mrs. Galler if she's here how to do this if you don't understand it okay now let's look at number seven now it's asking for a y-axis well, what I did is I highlighted in blue this y-axis right here. I highlighted right here this, this y-axis in blue. Now, f is 1 to the left of the flip line, so f prime is going to be 1 to the right of the flip line. g is 1 to the left of the flip line. g prime is 1 to the right of the flip line. Um, e is 1, 2, 3 to the left of the flip line. So G is going to be, G prime is going to be directly across 3 to the right of the flip line. H is 3 to the left of the flip line. So G prime is going to be exactly 3 to the right of the flip line. And I'm going to get this like that. And we talked about that yesterday. You guys did that one on your own. All right. The next one we wanted to figure out, okay, well, what were those, what are those two shapes flipped over? Well, if you notice, it's that blue line, okay, and that is the x-axis. So if we're looking at that shape, that is an x-axis reflection because you're flipping it over the x-axis. Now, on number nine, number nine said, use your rules, right? So you had to find your rules. Well, what are the rules? The rules for an x-axis reflection is keep the sign on the x value, change the sign on the y value. Keep x, change y. So all we did is we keep x, which is 1, and we change negative 1 to 1. We keep u as 4, we keep that, and we change the 2 to a negative 2. 6 is kept in v. And negative 2 is changed to a positive 2 in V prime. And that's where we left off yesterday. So hopefully this was a good review. So let's go ahead and continue with our um, number 10. Okay. So what does number 10 say? It says translate the triangle one unit to the right and five units down. One unit to the right and five units down. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we're going to do is take this whole triangle and do one to the right and five down. So if we do that, B is going to go one to the right and five down. One, two, three, four, five. So B prime is going to be right down here. And C is going to go five to the right uh, one to the right and five down. So C is going to be one to the right and five down. One, two, three, four, five. So here's C prime. And then A is going to be one to the right and five down. One, two, three, four, five. So there's A prime. Now let me clean this up a little bit because this is kind of messy. So hopefully you are able to see that. Okay, hopefully you were able to do that without my help. But there we go. I'm just going to clean these, get rid of these little scoopy loops up a little bit, clean it up. And so now I'm going to get this shape right here. I'm going to get this shape right here. 
See that? See that shape right there? I'm going to get that shape right there. Okay, so that's a translation. So I just did this part of my problem. But now I'm going to reflect the image over the y-axis. Well, where's the y-axis? The y-axis is right here. The y-axis is this red line I'm going over. This red line is our y-axis. So we're going to go ahead and take this blue figure, this A prime, B prime, C prime, and we're going to reflect it over the y-axis. Well, how would I do that? Well, that's pretty easy. What I did before is I noticed that A prime is two units away from the flip line to the right. So a double prime is going to be two units to the left of the flip line. So this is going to be a double prime. C prime is two units to the right on this side. So C double prime is going to be two units to the left. So that's C double prime. B double prime is, B prime is five units to the right. So B double prime is going to be five units to the left. And so the final shape is going to be this purple one right here. See that purple one? It's going to look just like this. And this is what you would need to do on your test, is make something look like this. I'll clean up all these scoop de loops here so they're not as dirty. Clean this up a little bit. And so this is what we're looking at. Notice, guys, what we're trying to do here is we're trying, we, the reason we have double prime is because we did it two times. The first time was the blue one, and then we did it a second time is the purple one. Okay, does that make sense? And there we go. All right, so now the, la the next page is our rotations page. So now we're going to do our rotations page. Now, how do we do our rotation? So let's take a look. Now, in my opinion, the best thing to do is use your rules. I'm not good at reflecting is pretty easy when it comes to reflecting when you have a graph because it's easy to see. Once you know the flip line, you just measure from the flip line. But reflect rotations are a little different so what i'm going to do with rotations is i'm going to use my rules okay so the first thing i want to do is i want to rewrite i want to figure out what my rule for my 90 degree counterclockwise rotation is now you guys have these in your notes so probably pause me right now and find them in your notes now the rule that i think we have in our notes is we swap x and y we swap x and y and then we change sign on new x value. Sorry, my handwriting's a little weird here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to swap x and y, and then we're going to change the sign on the new, new, new x value. Okay. So let's write down the coordinates of m, n, and l. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to write the coordinates of M of the pre-image, N, and L. So go ahead and write those coordinates down. Well, the coordinates of M are 2, 1. The coordinates of N are 5, 1. And the coordinates of L are 2 comma 3. Those are the coordinates of the pre-image. The pre-image, the image that we already have. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to find the coordinates of the image. So we're going to use our rule. So m prime is going to be, we're going to swap x and y, so 1 and then Two swap x and y, change the sign on the new x value. So that's going to be a negative 1. N, is, N prime is going to be swap x and y. So we're going to get a 1 and we're going to get a 5. Change the value on the new x value. So that's going to be negative 1, 5. And L is going to be L prime is going to be swap x and y. So we have 3, 2, 
and change the sign on the new x value. So that's negative 3. So now let's go ahead and graph the image, the blue points. So the first point is M, M prime. M prime is at negative 1, 2. Negative 1, 2, which is right, negative 1, positive 2, which is right here. Sorry, I almost graphed it wrong. That would be bad. And so that is M prime. The next one is N prime. N prime is at negative 1, 5. Left 1, up 5. So N prime is right up here. Sorry, that's kind of hard to read. And then L prime is at negative 3, 2. Left 3, up 2. So it's going to be right here. L prime is going to be right here. And then my shape is going to look like this, just like this. And that's going to be my new image. So I just rotated it 180 degrees about the origin, and that's the shape I should get, that blue shape. Okay? All right. So on number 12, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and find your 270 rule because this next one we're going to use our 270 rule, okay? So what's the 270 rule? Well, we're still going to swap x and y, but then we're going to change the sign on the new y value y value. See that? We're going to swap x and y, then we're going to change the sign on the new y value. Okay? Well, let's go ahead and write the coordinates of the pre-image. Well, a, the coordinates of a is negative 2, comma, 3. Negative 2, comma, 3. The coordinates of b are negative 1 comma 3, negative 1 comma 3. The coordinates of C are negative 1 comma 2. And the coordinates of D are negative 2 comma neg uh, positive 1, negative 2 comma positive 1. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my rule to write the image. Okay, so let me do this. So A prime is going to be, okay, I'm going to swap X and Y. So 3 and comes first, negative 2 comes second, and then I'm going to change the sign on the new Y value so that negative becomes a positive. Get my eraser up here. The negative becomes a positive. So that's 3, 2. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at B prime. Well, B prime, I'm going to swap X and Y. So it's going to be 3, negative 1. But then I'm going to change the sign on the new Y value. So I'm going to erase the negative. So B prime is going to be 3, comma, 1. All right. Let's do C prime. C prime is going to be, well, C prime is negative 1, 2. C is negative 1, 2. So C prime is going to be 2, negative 1. But then I'm going to change the sign on the new Y value. So I'm going to erase that negative. All right. I think you guys are getting this. Now D prime, okay, again, D is negative 2, comma, 1. So I'm going to put the 1 first and then the negative 2 but then I'm going to change the sign on the new y value, so that becomes a positive 2. Now we're ready to graph it. So a prime is at 3, comma, 2, right? 3 up 2 is a prime. 3, comma, 2, that's a prime. b prime is at 3, a prime is at uh B prime is at 3, comma, 1, right? 3 up 1. So B prime is right here at 3, comma, 1. Um, 
c prime is at 2 comma 1, right? 2 up 1. So here's my c prime right here. And d prime is at 1 comma 2. 1 comma 2. So d prime is at 1 comma 2. So d prime is right here. And then this is what my shape's going to look like. It's going to look something like this. Sorry, this is a little messy, guys. It's going to look something like this. It got rotated 270 degrees counterclockwise. Okay? All right, let's keep moving on. Let's do it. All right, the next rule is we want to rotate our shape 180 degrees about the origin. Now, let's go ahead and write our rule for 180 degrees. All we do for 180 degrees, it doesn't really matter left or right because you're going to get to the same point either way, is we're just going to change signs, no swapping. So all we're going to do on 180 degrees is we're going to change the signs with no swapping. So let's go ahead and list these out. So this is my pre-image. My PI points are going to be, well, let's go X, which is 1, comma, negative 2. This is my X. My Y is at 5, negative 2, 5, negative 2. My Z is at 4, negative 3. My Z is at 4, negative 3, and my W is at 2, negative 3. So those are my pre-image points. So now we need to go ahead and use my 180 rule to figure out my image. So X prime, all I'm going to do, no swapping, just change signs. So 1 becomes negative 1, negative 2 becomes negative positive 2. So x prime is at negative 1 comma 2. y prime is going to be negative 5. 5 becomes negative 5 and negative 2 becomes positive 2. So negative 5, 2. z prime is going to be 4 becomes negative 4 and Negative 3 becomes positive 3. And W prime is uh, what? 2 becomes negative 2. And negative 3 becomes positive 3. And now I'm ready to graph my per image. So X is negative 1, 2. Negative 1, 2. So X prime is right here. All right? y prime is at negative 5, 2. So I go left 5 up 2, and here's my y prime. z prime is at negative 4, 3. Negative 4, 3. Left 4 up 3, and here's my z, uh, that's z prime. Let me write that over here. I think that z prime might be in the way if I'm not careful. So we'll write z prime up here, z prime. And w prime is at negative 2, 3, negative 2, 3. So z prime or w prime is up here, and this is what my shape looks like. It looks something like this. And there's my shape. I rotated it. 180 degrees counterclockwise. And we're done. Awesome. All right. So let's. All right. So let's take a look at number 14 here. Um, Number 14 has vertices J is 1, 2, K is 4, 2, and L is 1, negative 3. And we want to do a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. Okay. Kailani, so Smith to what the we're going to do, 
Kyle Smith to the front office. Kamen Smith to the front office. I'm going to write J is 1, 2. K is 4, 2. And um, L is 1, negative 3. All right. So what you're going to do next is you're going to um, 90 degree counterclockwise rotation about the origin. So that means we're going to swap X and Y values. And then we're going to change the sign on new X value. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to swap X and Y and we're going to change the sign on the new X value. Okay, so if we look at J prime, we're going to swap X and Y. So we're going to have 2 comma 1 and then we're going to change the sign on the new X value. So the new X value becomes negative. K prime, we're going to swap X and Y. So we get 2, 4 and we're going to change the sign on the new X value, which is negative 2, 4. And L prime, we're going to swap X and Y, so we have negative 3, 1, but then we're going to change the sign on the new X value, which is just positive 3. And that's going to be our, um, that's going to be our, our, uh, our 90 degree rotation rule for number 14. All right, let's look at number 15. Why is it necessary not to use the words clockwise or counterclockwise when rotating 180 degrees. Now, think about this, guys. When you were, when you were, let's say, um, standing. Let's say everyone was standing, and you were looking, you were looking here. So this is you standing here, looking in this direction. This is the top of your head right here. Okay. This was the zero position. Okay. Now, when you went 180 degrees, so here's the top, like your eyes. This is kind of the top of your head here, okay? This is you looking at the zero degree position. If you do 180 degrees counterclockwise, that means you're going to look this way. And so now you're going to be looking at the wall. So here's the top of your head. You just think about this as the top of your head. This is your eyes. You're going to be looking at this wall. This is 180 degrees counterclockwise. But... If you turn this way, 180 degrees clockwise, this is 180 degrees clockwise, then you will be facing the same direction. So why is it not necessary to say counterclockwise or clockwise when it's 180 degrees? Because you will, and I want you to write this down, you will end up in the same position either way. So it doesn't matter about which direction you turn. You're going to end up the same way, in the same position either way, if you do counterclockwise or clockwise with 180 degrees. Okay. All right, let's keep going here. Um, all right, let's look at the last page. Now, guys, I'm not going to have you do the entire last page. I'm just going to have us do some of them. So here's what I want you to do. Right off the bat, I do not want you to do, um, let's, I don't want you to do number 19. I don't want to do 19. And I don't, um, yeah, let's just skip 19. I think we can do the rest, okay? So let's skip 19. So go ahead and X 19 out. We're not going to do 19. All right, so let's go ahead and do number 16. It says, dilate the following figure with a scale factor of 2. Well, the first thing I'm going to do on this is I'm going to write the pre-image points. I'm going to write the pre-image points. Okay, so my pre-image, I've got R, I've got T, and I've got S. And I'm going to write the pre-image points. Okay, so what are my pre-image points? My pre-image points, R is the point negative 1, 1. Negative 1, 1. T is the point negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, and S is the point 2, negative 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a scale factor of 2, and I'm going to multiply everything through. 
So now I'm going to talk about the image, and then I'll graph it, okay? All right, so now here we go. So r prime is going to be, r prime is going to be, I'm going to multiply everything by 2. Well, negative 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 1 in the r is 2. So r prime is going to be negative 2, 2, because I multiplied it by a scale factor of 2. T prime is going to be negative 2, comma, negative 4, because negative 1 times negative 2 is negative, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, and negative 2 times 4 is negative 4. And S prime is equal to 4, comma, negative 2, because 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 2, one, negative 1 is negative 2. And then I'll just go ahead and graph the image. So r prime is at negative 2, 2. t prime is at negative 2, negative 4. So this is r prime. This is t prime. And s prime is at 4, negative 2. 4, negative 2. Let me just make sure I'm doing something right. So let me make sure I have all my, so we have R is, I'm just making sure my points are at negative 1, 1, that's good. T is at negative 1, negative 2, and, oh, my bad. S is at 2, negative 2, so this should be 2, negative 2. My bad, I'm sorry. And so when we multiply that by 2, this should be negative 4, I'm sorry, because I was graphing it and it wasn't at the right pot spot. So that should be at 4, negative 4, should be right down here. My bad, sorry about that, guys. So S prime should be here, because S is at 2, negative 2, not 2, negative 1. All right, so now we go ahead and graph this, just like this, and we get this shape. And we see, ladies and gentlemen, that this shape grew really, really big. Okay, see that? All right. Um, let's go ahead and do number 17. Now, 17 can be a little tricky, so let's let's take a look at it here. So our pre-image, our pre-image is going to be L is negative 3, comma, 4. M is going to be 4, comma, 4. N is going to be 4, comma, negative 2. Um, o is going to be at negative 3, comma, um, negative 2. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by a dilation of 1 half. Now I want you to think of 1 half as 1 half of, right? So L prime, well, what's half of 3? Half of 3 is 1.5. So half of negative 3 is negative 1.5 for L. And half of 4 is 2. So L prime is going to be at negative 1.52. M prime is going to be, well, half of 4 is 2. And half of 4 is 2. So M prime is going to be at 2 comma 2. N prime is going to be at half of 4 is 2. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. And O prime is going to be at half of negative 3 is 1.5, negative 1.5, and half of negative 2 is negative 1. So let's go ahead and graph these points right now. Okay? All right, so L prime is at negative 1.52, so we start at the poo, the point of origin. We go left 1.5 and up 2, and that's going to be... L if you're able, prime. please come to the front office as you have a visitor, Mr. Janice, to the front office. Thank you. M prime is going to be at 2, comma 2. So M prime is going to be right here. N prime is going to be at 2, negative 1. 2, negative 1. So N prime is going to be right here. And O prime is going to be at 1 point, negative 1 1.5, negative 1. So O prime is going to be right here. And so we're going to get something like this. And that's going to be our um, dilation. Notice it shrunk because 
One half is less than one, so it shrinks it. All right. Um, let's take a look at this, this one right here. So it says on number 18, A is 1 comma 2, B is 4 comma 2, and C is 5 comma 3. Now, let's take a look here. A goes to A prime, and A prime becomes 3 comma 6. B prime becomes 12 comma 6. And C prime becomes 15 comma 9. So what happened here, ladies and gentlemen? What happened here? What is the scale factor? What are you multiplying these by? This is your pre-image. What are you multiplying your pre-image by to get your image? Can you find a number that multiplies these numbers to get these? Well, yeah. If you just multiply everything by 3, you get these numbers. So what you'd have on number 18 is a scale factor of 3. Okay? And the last one, it says, describe the difference between the images of a dilation and the images of the other three. Well, the other three are reflections, rot um, oh, actually, rotations, kind of going out of order here, and then we always have our translations, right? Okay, so here's the deal with these things. These things are always congruent to each other, always congruent. And that means no shrinking or growing. Okay, no shrinking or growing. A dilation, you can shrink or grow. So the big difference, ladies and gentlemen, is that a dilation is a shrink or grow. Okay, have this all filled in, and I'd like you to pass this in to Mrs. V or Mrs. Um, Mrs. Galler, if she's here. And then have a wonderful day. That should get us through the rest of this class. See you later. Bye.